Today I'm going to be talking to you about variants of concern. Uh, it's good to remember that what we consider the wild type virus is the virus that originated over a year ago now in China. And really variants are just viruses that have changed or uh, mutated in some way. And viruses typically mutate when they get inside the cell they've infected and they reproduce or make many more copies of themselves. Some variants will uh, not really affect the function of the virus and the other variants will. And sometimes the function that they affect improves the, the survivability of the virus or helps it thrive. And in really areas that can help a virus th thrive or, or make more of itself would, would be improve transmission um, the ability to make more severe disease and the ability to potentially evade um, the protection that vaccines provide, which really leads us to the topic of variants of concern. So you've probably heard uh, about a few variants of concern in the media, and it, they're the, the three main ones that we talked about are, have been identified based on location where they were first discovered. So there's the UK variant or B117. The South African variant, or uh, B1350, and the Brazil variant, or P1. And they are of concern or worrisome to us because they do seem to be able to spread more readily uh, than the wild type of the virus, the original strain. And the fact that they spread more easily uh, is of particular concern because we could experience a significant third wave where. We have more people within the population becoming infected, more hospitalizations and increased morbidity and mortality. The, there's a great deal of research underway to determine if the variants of concern cause more severe disease, but some preliminary evidence out of the UK sh sh suggests that the UK variant does in fact cause somewhat more severe disease than the wild type or the original strain of the virus. In terms of symptom differences from the wild type versus variants of concern, it's the same symptoms you've been hearing about uh, for the past year. So there's no change as of yet. In terms of the testing for variants of concern, our provincial lab has done an incredible job throughout this entire pandemic. Um, and with variants of concern, they've been doing whole genome sequencing for some time in select populations such as people returning uh, from travel abroad who have tested positive and then they would do the whole genome sequencing. And then more recently, as of February 3rd, all new positive COVID-19 tests are having what they call high throughput um, uh, nucleic acid screening done, which will more quickly identify a variant of concern. And uh, so, so really in incredible work by the lab. And, and the, this includes all COVID positive test results that are done at other labs, such as DynaLife or APL are having this, this done. In terms of vaccines and variants of concern, um, we're, we're worried that the, the variants of concern may have the ability uh, to evade uh, as, uh, the vaccine induced immunity. Um, and, you know, this, this is something that they're doing a great deal of research on as well um, to see how effective uh, all of our different vaccines are uh, against the various variants. But really, this highlights for us the need to control the spread of variants using the most basic of public health measures, which really leads us to the, the question of, do we need to change what we're doing to protect ourselves and our patients? And the, the answer is no. The protective measures that we have in place work, but we really need to be extra mindful of them, especially a year in to this global pandemic where staff are understandably weary, uh, tired, um, but also there's the hope imbued with having this massive, incredible vaccine rollout but those two things combined may cause us to let down our guard a bit, and we can't do that with variants of concern. Um, in simplistic terms, we don't want these variants to enter uh, into our airway, 
where they might actually have the ability to bind more easily to the lining of our lungs than the wild type and cause infection. And so what that means for us is we have to make sure that the protective armor we have in place, as it were, um, is, is being utilized optimally. And so that means continuing to do meticulous hand hygiene and making sure that we're choosing the right protective uh, personal equipment for every situation. So our healthcare workers have done an incredible job in this past year, protecting themselves, their patients and their families and, and colleagues uh, from, from this, this virus. But unfortunately, as healthcare workers, we don't get to take a break, even though we probably feel like we need one. Um, and so we have to really, uh, in, in the face of these variants of concern, keep wearing the appropriate PPE for each situation, continue to use the, 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 the masking at all times at work and the eye protection when we're involved in direct patient care. And then when we have patients that are either suspect or known COVID-19 patients on contact and droplet precautions, we have to make sure we don and doff appropriately with all the hand hygiene steps in between our protective equipment, including our mask, uh, our eye protection, our gowns and our gloves. And then of course, if we're doing an aerosol generating medical procedure, switching out the surgical mask or medical mask for a fit tested N95. And to help us with this, we have this incredible resource uh, in our province with our PPE coaches and the PPE training program, which any healthcare worker can do. And these PPE coaches really uh, help us protect ourselves uh, in, in the crucial donning and doffing steps and, and make sure that we, we avoid potential mistakes in, 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 in those steps and make sure we're protecting ourselves as best we can. As well, uh, we have to continue to be mindful of uh, what we do on breaks and make sure that when our masks are off and we're eating and drinking, we're not in common shared areas, but we're in designated break areas and we're greater than two meters apart. It's very important uh, that we continue to do this. And really in summary, um, as long as we watch out for each other and be extra mindful of our PPE and employ PPE coaches, we'll all be protected from the variants of concern. So thanks so much for your time and stay safe. Together, we do amazing things every day.